The Canadian dollar goes back a very long way. Before Confederation, dollar notes were issued through the governments of the colony of British Columbia, the province of Canada, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. The most common type of banknote came from the province of Canada, which is evident in the fact that for a short period after Confederation in 1867, the first national currency of Canada was the province of Canada notes. The first official Dominion Canada notes were issued in 1870 in several denominations including the one dollar. For the next 119 years, the one dollar note would be a staple of Canadian currency, changing little beyond the colour and the monarch on the front of the note. Then, in 1987, something else came along and the one dollar Canadian banknote would disappear. Its replacement would become something uniquely Canadian, which is definitely a part of our heritage, the loony. In the early 1980s, vending machine operators and transit systems were lobbying the Canadian government to replace banknotes with coins. At the same time, the Royal Canadian Mint was also working on a new composition for a dollar coin, and they hoped it would lead to increased circulation. In 1985, the House of Commons Committee released a report that stated it would be best for the dollar bill to be eliminated, even though there was no evidence of whether or not Canadians supported the move. For the government, the change seemed like a good idea considering dollar bills would only last less than a year before they needed to be replaced, while a dollar coin would last upwards of 20 years. This durability would result in cost savings of between $175 to $250 million based on government estimates. On March 25, 1986, the Government of Canada announced that a new dollar coin would be introduced and the dollar bill would be phased out. The initial pressing of coins would be $300 million in total, costing $31.8 million or $67.5 million today. Thanks to the difference between the cost of production and the value of the coin, it was expected that the mint would make up to $40 million a year on the coins and the proceeds, $60 million over five years, would be put forward towards funding for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. The government also announced that the coin would be slightly larger than a quarter and would be 11-sided and gold in colour. Now, the original plan for the loonie was to continue with the Voyager theme of its predecessor, but the master dies for the coin that were struck in Ottawa were lost on their way to Winnipeg on November 3rd, 1986. This was a major problem and a House of Commons committee investigated and found that there was no documented procedure by the Mint for transporting master dies and that the die had been shipped by a local courier in order to save $43. This was not the first time it had happened, as an investigation found the Mint had lost three dies in five years, but this one was the most public. Usually the protocol is to package each side of the coin die separately and send them in different shipments. This was done so that if the dies ever came into the hands of counterfeiters, they had only one side of the coin. For some reason, both sides of the die were shipped together. Officials waiting in Winnipeg for the shipment for 11 days, but it never arrived. On November 14th, the RCMP were called. The Mint attempted to keep the loss under wraps from the public, hoping the dies would turn up, including hiding the theft from Monique Vezina, the Minister of Supply and Services. The RCMP investigated and came to the conclusion that the dies were lost in transit. The Mint disagreed with this, feeling the dies were in fact been stolen. Whatever happened to them, they were never found again. The Mint had thought to make a small alteration to the Voyager design that would hopefully reveal the location of the thief over time, but they decided it was best just to do a new design and they would replace the Voyager with the image of a common loon floating in the water, which was designed by Robert Ralph Carmichael. With the coin having a loon on the face, it would result in the name Looney being adopted by the public. The Looney officially entered circulation on June 30, 1987 with 40 million coins introduced around the country. By the end of the year, 205 million had been printed. Over the course of the next 21 months, a loony and a dollar bill note were produced at the same time until the Bank of Canada officially ceased production of the bank note. The final dollar bill was printed on June 30, 1989. The same year, 184,773,902 loonies had been printed. At first, people were not in favour of the new loony and wanted a return to the dollar banknote. The Bank of Canada knew that people would not be in favour of the change at first, but by taking the banknote out of circulation, the acceptance of the loonie was gradual for Canadians. The number of loonies put into circulation would fall over the next few decades, going from 68 million in 1990 to 17 million in 1996, followed by no loonies produced from 1997 to 2001. Production would increase from 2.3 million in 2002 to 120 million in 2013, before sharply falling again to 24.9 million in 2014. Over the course of the first 20 years of the loonie, 800 million would be struck into circulation. 
By 2017, 1.3 billion loonies have been produced, with each loonie lasting an average of 20 years. There are so many loonies out there now that if you put them side by side in a line, they would easily span across Canada's national highway system. Today the loonie is not a coin, it is an iconic symbol of Canada. The loonie is synonymous with the Canadian dollar. The loonie would reach new levels of mythical status in 2002 at the Salt Lake Winter Olympics when Dan Craig, the NHL's ice making consultant, brought his ice crew from Edmonton to make the ice for the Olympics. Trent Evans would secretly place a loonie at center ice. Only a few people knew about the placement of the coin and they were sworn to secrecy. The men and women's teams were told and both teams would go on to win the gold, and several members of the women's team kissed the spot where the loonie was hidden after they won. After the men won, the loonie was dug up and given to Wayne Gretzky, who revealed it to the world at the post-game press conference, and today, that lucky loonie sits at the Hockey Hall of Fame. If you enjoy Canadian history, then check out my podcast, Canadian History X, available on all podcast platforms.